Привет, друзья! G'day, guys! Welcome to another Soviet lens review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at which Soviet lens has the best bokeh. So, let's get into it. Alrighty, so as you can see guys, I've got a lens with some very special bokeh on at the moment. It is of course the Zenitar ME1 with its famous square bokeh or diamond shaped bokeh. But today I wanted to put to the test uh, a bunch of other Soviet lenses that I own and see which, which one comes out on top when it comes to the quality of its bokeh. Now for this test, I will only be testing non-telephoto lenses, uh, so anything 50mm or below is what I will be testing here today. And we're going to be looking at a lot of things, from uh, the quality of the bokeh itself, to how well it deals with highlights, uh, to some longitudinal chromatic aberration tests, uh, near-field bokeh tests, far-field bokeh tests, all of that good stuff, to find out once and for all which Soviet lens really has the best bokeh. Okay, so let's take a look at what lenses are going into the competition today. Starting from our widest lens, we have our Mir 10A, which is a 28mm f3.5 uh, lens made at the KMZ plant. Very nice lens. I think it is going to uh, be the one to look out for when it comes to a slightly wider angle. Uh, now, next up, we actually have a 35mm lens, the Mir 24M, uh, which is my favourite mirror lens, a fantastic, really 3D poppy bokeh lens uh, that again comes from KMZ, it's 35mm, it's f2, we're going to get some good bokeh from this lens. Uh, now next up, after that we've got the Mir 1 Sh, uh, which is basically, the, think of it as the Mir 1 for this test, because the Mir 1 Sh and the Mir 1 V, they both have the same bokeh, uh, it's just the sharpness of the Mir 1 Sh is a little bit lower. So focus on the bokeh here for the Mir 1 Sh, it could come out and surprise us, bit of a dark horse. Next up, uh, I wanted to do the 45mm end of my Vario Zenitake, but unfortunately the Vario Zenitake, at least my copy, it does not close focus well. So I wasn't able to include it in today's review. Uh, effectively, it got disqualified. But when we reach 50mm, we have got the Zenitar ME1, which is on the camera right now. I think this is going to be the lens to beat today. Uh, it goes down to f1.7, circular bokeh wide open, down to square bokeh when you close up that aperture. I mean, it's the one to beat. Next up, though, uh, we have a hot contender. Uh, it is the Helios 44 M2, uh, M42 Mount Helios, and it is going to be one of our Helios representatives today. And I'm sure it's going to put in a big showing with a maximum aperture of f2. After that Helios, we've got the Indostar 52, uh, 50 mil, a bit higher than 50 mil actually, f3.5. You're not going to get too much bokeh with the Indostar, but let's see how it does. And last up, we have the Helios 81N. It is the only Nikon F mount, or I should say Kiev mount, uh, lens in this competition today. But I do really like the bokeh that comes out of the Helios 81N, so it could be one to look out for. Okay, it's time to test these lenses. Bokeh quality in the near field and far field first off. We've got the Mir 24M 35mm f2 here and you can see that it does have great highlight separation. Highlights are dealt with correctly, uh, although around the corners of the frame, a few points off because it does not have perfectly circular bokeh there. Uh, and that does mean that those edges around the corner of the frame, around that plant in particular, are slightly distracting uh, just as they don't form perfect bokeh balls. Overall, that's a 3.5 out of 5. Next up, we've got the Mir 1 Sh. It's got a nice painterly transition to out of focus areas uh, and quite a smooth look to its bokeh, but there are some distracting highlights in the corner of the frame uh, and overall, the bokeh from the Mir 1 Sh is just a touch busy. Overall, I think that gets a 3 out of 5 from me. Okay, next up we've got the Mir 10A, and we can see that it does have very nice circular bokeh, although towards the edges of the frame we can see that the highlights aren't completely disappearing there, um, and that's a bit of an issue. Nice front field bokeh though, uh, although with an aperture of f3.5, the Mir 10A it really struggles to get as much bokeh as you would want, so that's why I'm giving it a 3.5 out of 5. Next up now we have the Zenitar ME1, and my goodness, this looks computer generated, it looks like a rendered image in a gray 
great way. Textbook bokeh. You just cannot get bokeh better than this. This is going to be pretty hard to beat. I mean, the Zenta ME1, it has perfect bokeh. Overall, this gets a 5 out of 5 from me. Next up, we have the Indostar 52. It has very creamy, soft bokeh uh, that's nice and circular as well. Now, the near field bokeh is a little bit more pronounced. Uh, as you can see there on the highlights, it's a little bit more distracting. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with the Indostar here. And I think I'm going to have to give it a 4 out of 5. Next up, we've got the Helios 44-2. And wow, this is some super creamy bokeh. That's what we want from the Helios. That's what we expect. And you can really see it here. It's doing very well. Although the near field blur is a little bit busier. There's a few overlapping circles and there's just a couple of distracting highlights in there. Overall, though, the Helios 44-2 gets a 4.5 out of 5. That's some great bokeh. Next, I've got another Helios, the Helios 81N here uh, for Nikon mount. And you can see it has very similar characteristics to the Helios 44.2. A couple of distracting highlights here or there, but overall the bokeh is very circular and very, very pretty. That's another 4.5 out of 5 from me. Okay, next up, let's take a look at some longitudinal chromatic aberration to see how well these lenses deal with color shifts in the near and far field of the depth of field. Mir 24M is first up here, and this is looking really good. There is not much shifting uh, for the Mir 24M. This is looking almost perfect, and that gets a 4.5 out of 5. Next up, the Mir Wancha, and again, the Mir Wancha is really looking great. There is not much color change going on there at all, almost nothing noticeable. Again, a 4.5 out of 5. Next up, we've got the Mir 10A, and wow, this is impressive. The Mir 10A has never even heard of longitudinal chromatic aberration from the looks. That's a 5 out of 5. Next up, we're taking a look at the Zenita ME1, and it looks like we've found the Zenita ME1's weakness here. There is a little bit of magenta in the near field, a little bit of green in the far field, and I think that's that gets a 4 out of 5, not perfect for the Zenitar. Indostar 52 is next up here. Fantastic showing from the Indostar. Wow, that is completely clear. That's a 5 out of 5 there for the Indostar. Next up, we've got the Helios 44-2, and there's lots of blur and not much chromatic aberration there. The tiniest bit of green in the far field, but overall, that's excellent. A good result, 4.5 out of 5. Finally, the other Helios here, the Helios 81N. And again, a good result, maybe not quite as good as the other Helios. This one does display some magenta in the near field, tiny bit of green in the far field, maybe a four out of five. Okay, next up, we're gonna be taking a look at these lenses subject separation. So how well they separate a subject between the foreground and the background. So let's take a look first up at the Mir 24M. Fantastic work here by the 35 mil. It is really clear what is in the foreground, what is in the background. That is a 4.5 out of five. Now we've got the Mir 1 Sh, and it just seems a little bit busier here, the Mir 1 Sh. Um, it's uh, yeah, a little bit more distracting. So a 2.5 out of five standard result. Next up, we've got the Mir 10A and the wide angle of the Mir 10A is coming uh, around to hurt it a little bit here. I think this is just not a great separation. Two out of five. And the Zenitar ME1, oh wow. I mean, it looks like you've got two layers in this image. That's how good the Zenitar ME1 separates its subjects. Five out of five. Next up, the Indostar 52, and with its maximum aperture of only f3.5, it's not that fast, and the background is still really visible here. So unfortunately, the Indostar 52, it does not have that much 3D pop, two out of five. Helios 44.2, a great example of the Helios's power here to separate its subjects, uh, a touch of busy bokeh here or there, uh, but a four out of five overall. And the Helios 81N, again, very similar to the Helios 44.2. Um, you've got a couple of busy highlight areas, but overall it's doing a great job separating its subject, four out of five. Okay, next up here, we're gonna be taking a look at each of these lenses' uh, apertures and how uniform the bokeh looks as you stop each of these lenses apertures down. So what we're gonna be looking for is how well they can maintain a bokeh shape. Uh, we're not gonna be awarding extra points to being circular necessarily, uh, but if the lens can maintain a consistent bokeh shape, then it's gonna score higher. So first up, we've got the Mir 24M here. It's starting off really, really nice and circular. Those highlights are looking perfect. Um, although unfortunately it does stop down a little bit and turn into a bit of a pentagon or hexagon because uh, it doesn't have that many aperture blades. So overall, this is a three out of five performance. Next up, we've got the Mir 1 which really doesn't have that much bokeh at the start anyway, 
But when you stop it down, it does maintain quite a nice circular shape. Um, it is looking pretty uniform there. So we've got to give the Mir one sure four points here. Next up, we've got the Mir 10A. The Mir 10A starts out with its bokeh looking great. But as we stop it down, uh, that's when we get the Ninja Stars, which, I mean, you might like them, but for the purposes of this test, we're going to subtract some points for that bokeh shape changing so dramatically. This is only going to get a two out of five. Next up, the Zenitar ME1, which does start off with a perfectly circular aperture and wow some really nice bokeh but as soon as you stop it down to f2.8 and below it is going to turn into perfectly square bokeh but that bokeh is very very well defined it is a perfect square shape so it really uh, is pretty high up there although because of the difference uh, between the aperture from f1.7 down to f2.8 I'm going to dock at a point four out of five for the Zenitar. Next up we've got the Indostar 52 and the Indostar actually performs performed pretty well here. I wasn't expecting it to, but it does stay very, very circular as we stop it down uh, and back up again. So some points for the Indostar, that's going to get a four out of five. Next up, we've got the Helios 44.2 with its 13 aperture blades. And wow, you can tell that it's got a lot of aperture blades here. A circular bokeh from the start right through to the end. A little bit of cat sighing there, but I mean, you can't get much better than this. That is a five out of five performance. Next up, we've got the Helios 81N. Now the Helios 81N uh, actually has less aperture blades than the 44.2. And so that's why we see it turn into uh, a hexagon here. And that's going to subtract some points. 3.5 out of 5. Okay, guys, so there we go. We've taken a look at all of these lenses today. Who do you think won? Well, uh, it's a pretty tight one, but at the end of the day, uh, I've actually got to give it to the Zenitar ME1. I mean, in all of those tests there, we saw just how beautiful the Zenitar ME1's bokeh is, and it is the only lens, of course, with bokeh that can well, become uh, from circular to square, that is a really unique feature, and it does it all whilst just having absolutely magnificent bokeh. Let me know though, what did you think? Did you think another lens should have won this one? Uh, pop a comment down below, let me know. Let me know what you want to see in some future Soviet lens reviews videos. But until the next time, I'll see you then.